Bigley and Marotta. Bigley and Marotta mornings. Arizona Sports, the local sports leader. Bigley Blast. There have been many ill-timed proclamations in sports, like I'm taking my talents to South Beach, or Ron Paulus will win four Heismans, or I promise I'm not going to Morgantown. Unfortunately, the latter was uttered by ASU Athletic Director Ray Anderson, a quip intended to be a joke while responding to a question from his boss, Michael Crow. Alas, it was not funny to any of ASU's new neighbors in the Big 12. It came off as arrogant. It sounded like a school that is joining the Big 12 out of desperation, not desire. And it immediately lit up message boards all over their new conference where many Big 12 fans have already ID ASU as the new villain in town. Some even believed it reflected the poor judgment and poor leadership that sabotaged the Pac-12 from within, and unfortunately, those people are right. And unfortunately, this was about the clunkiest, clumsiest entrance into a brand new future that you can imagine. Now, hopefully in the future, this move will sharpen ASU's football program and the apathetic game day culture in Tempe. Because if ASU is not careful, they're going to look up and see their stands filled with infidels just like Sundays at State Farm Stadium. And in the end, it was proof that too often at ASU, TD doesn't stand for touchdown. TD stands for tone deaf. You're going you're gonna to try to, in the Olympic sports, go to divisions and probably do that in football as well. Uh, for, uh, travel and regionalization still makes sense, but it really makes sense for the Olympic sports. Uh, and so you might imagine our selfish interest is that if that keeps us with the game. We're not giving you a remote office in Morgantown. I promise I'm not going to Morgantown. <laughs> I'm going to sign that to Gene, Gene Boyd. He go to Morgantown. <laughs> but you know, send me to Texas and uh, the rivalry with Arizona and, and, and start a new one with BYU and Utah and Colorado. Yeah. That's where a lot of our Olympics So So look, look at where we are. So we have two schools in Utah, two schools in Arizona. We have the Colorado. Uh, and then we've got the schools in Texas. I mean, that's a quite quite a nice little group of schools right there. So I don't know how that's going to end up, but that's a nice little regional group of schools. That's Michael Crow and Ray Anderson from Saturday uh, talking about maybe hoping for mm-hmm. the development of regions uh, within the Big 12 after this round of expansion. Now, the fact of the matter is Ray Anderson made the quip that everybody in Morgantown, West Virginia, and other cities in mm-hmm. uh, the Big 12 are pointing at. It's like, wow, welcome to the conference. Yeah. What a jerky thing to yeah. say. Michael Crow set him up for it. Oh, there's no <laughs> doubt about it. He put it on the tee. There's no doubt about it. And But but again, this is this is where they got to kind of be careful here. Because Michael Crow, in when you go back and listen to Michael Crow talk about the Apple deal in Star Trekian terms, as if he were Captain Kirk, right? He, you can understand why he got so enamored with Larry Scott's dreams of brilliance and shiny things. Right. Well, Larry Scott actually pr- delivered on some of those shiny things. Okay. It was all in the form of like hotel suites and office buildings, yeah. but. And but- and again, and I think also in this case, Jared, shut the music off, Jared. <laughs> you heard that too. <laughs> I that is a fault of this board. Yeah. Okay. That it was all the way down. All right. So so I think that blame in the case- it on the board. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know this for a fact because I hear from a lot of ASU alumni, and I just want to preface that just to state that this isn't just me flying off the handle at this. There are a lot of ASU fans who want to know why, if you are, why does Michael Crow still have confidence in the athletic director who put the this program in the hands of Herm Edwards and who drove this and who, who staff and and all that stuff drove them right into the ditch? Okay, so if if that's your choice to get that got you into that mess. Why do you trust him to get you out of this mess? And again, it's that deep loyalty that Michael Crow has to a vision that sometimes only he seems to have by himself. Not always in step with what his fan base wants. And t- because because it's not. A lot of his fan base wants a kick-ass football team. Yes. And and that and and that's not his first priority. So I, I Again, and I'm not trying to make this negative because I think that ASU ended up where they need to be, but but that little get-together Saturday, that, that spoke to a lot of people, and not in a good way. No, and a lot of the reaction, and you've mentioned it the last couple of days on the show and just mentioned it in the blast, too, is and 
what you described as a lukewarm game day atmosphere. Is that is that how you described apathetic. it? Yeah. Ap- a- apathetic. Yeah. Yeah. Apathetic. I saw a lot of people reacting to that terminology, and again pinning that on the leadership at Arizona State that the tailgate culture has been almost completely shut down at ASU. Yeah. And if you go, like, I, I haven't had experience going to games in the SEC. I've heard the stories. I've seen the images. It's it's epic what they do. It is epic what they do. Some of the experiences that I've had in other cities and other college towns on game day, seeing what goes on in Lincoln, Nebraska, before a Nebraska game is mind-blowing. Mm-hmm. Recently, in 2018, when ASU played up in Seattle, I made that trip and you know, got to see the the whole sailgating uh, culture that exists up there. Uh, you know, if there's rules cracking down on what you can do before the game, people totally aren't going to show up before I the totally game, agree. or might not show up at all. I totally agree. But when I when I talk about game day seriousness, when you get into these other conferences, the Big Twelve and the SEC, I went to an LSU game during the day, and it blew my mind. I could only imagine what it's like at nighttime. It, what it really the be- same but darker and everybody's ten times drunker. Right. Exa- well, I don't. Know, I don't know how the latter would be humanly possible. To be honest with you, but but I think in the case of ASU, everything you're saying is is absolutely accurate. Where you go to these other universities and the game and game day is all that matters on Saturday. Mm-hmm. Nothing else. Nothing before. Nothing after. At ASU, it's uh, at best. Let's go for half and bail. Mm-hmm. And you can make all the excuses you want. Quality of opponent, weather, quality of venue, seating, uh, what, whatever you want to call it. Whatever excuse you want to grab, if you have got a compelling vibe and a great identity, they're going to be there. And, and this is this is what the Pac-12 hopefully is – I'm sorry, the Big 12 is mm-hmm. hopefully going to do for ASU football. But ASU is not different from any other team or f- franchise in this market is that you can take care of a lot of that vibe on your own mm-hmm. just by the quality of the product you put on the field or the mm-hmm. court. Mm-hmm. It's the way it is. It's really the way it, it was for almost the entire Pac-12. Yes. Which so, was one of the problems yeah. with the conference is mm-hmm. that unless you were winning at very high levels, you didn't have the undisputed, uh, you know, unwavering support of all your fans all yeah. the time like you were in, in like the SEC or the Big 12 or Big 10. So uh, so I'm hoping that we get to the point when when teams from the Big 12 come to Tempe with small armies of fans intact and we've said that already, you know, it, it's you look at Iowa State, if they come to play ASU in basketball, there'll, there'll be 12,000 people in the building as opposed to 1,200 if Stanford's a team. Um, you, you think about what BYU and football might do. There's, a, there's any number of options that are going to speak to not only traveling alumni, but transplants from those cities who are currently here. And you might start to see what the Cardinals are dealing with, a split audience. I hope that that rallies ASU's fan base because college kids are different. Mm-hmm. They, they'd rally around that. Yeah. 